Hello there and welcome back to another review. Today we're going to be having a look at Sailor Suit and Machine Gun, uh, which is a movie I knew nothing about going into this, so I'm going to see this in total newbie. I had no idea what the movie was about. All I knew was I liked the title, saw it on Amazon, thought I've got to pick it up, I've got to check it out and um, just see what the film was about. And I really enjoyed this movie. Um, it's made back in 1981 and it stars Hiroku Yakushimuru, I believe. That's how you say her name. I apologise if anybody out there, if I'm saying it wrong, but I think that's sort of how you say her name. And she was very much sort of the teen star at the time. She was a big deal. She was sort of the teen starlet, or at least it was this film that helped uh, make her one. Uh, she even sung the theme song to the movie. And let's say the film topped the box office in Japan. It was a really big deal when it came out, and it's really nice in this day and age that we are getting movies like this being released in the West, uh, um, especially like someone like myself. I'd never heard of this film. Never heard of it. Just saw it on Amazon, thought, I've got to check it out. I've got to pick it up. Um... So there's with this Blu-ray, there's two different versions. There's the theatrical version, and then there's sort of a longer extended cut. I've only seen the theatrical version so far. I'm not sure, you know, the extended cut, if it's just like there's extra scenes or extended scenes, but I'll just be talking about the version that I've seen today, which is the original theatrical version. Um, as I mentioned, the film topped the box office in Japan, and when it, like... Um, it's never been it's never had a western release you know until recently so as i say thanks to companies like arrow eureka 88 films we are getting sort of releases of um, obscure movies from different countries that we you know we've never have seen before and like i say especially me i've never ever heard of this movie um so if you have heard of this if you have seen this movie i'd love to hear what you thought of it if it's you know you enjoyed it i personally did i thought it was a brilliant movie and i think that helps sometimes when you go into a movie and you don't know what to expect. I had no idea if this was going to be like a drama film, like an action film. I had no idea what it was going to be. So I was going to this completely open-minded, no idea what was going on, but I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a brilliant movie. Um, it's, it's, it's sort of like, a, if I had to describe it, it's sort of like a coming-of-age film at the same time it's sort of a gangster film at the same time as that is sort of an art house film. So there's a lot going on with this movie there's a real myriad a real mishmash of genres going on with this movie and they all seem to work and splice together one thing i did find very impressive about the film was the amount of long takes that happen um rather than say <coughs> excuse me like a few lines of dialogue then the director cuts then it's from a different angle or you know shoot it here then we quickly pan over there there's a lot of scenes that are all done in one take one continuous take and um it's really impressive and I think it really helps with the film and the narrative of the film and uh, the type of film that it is. I think it really does work in regards to, like I say, the type of film this is. And there's an impressive um, an impressive sequence where Izumi, our main character, is sort of, she gets on this bike and goes for like a bike ride through the Jap like Japanese streets. And it's all done in sort of one take, like the camera's in front of all these bikes. And you're just following them around corners and things like that, like the camera's coming backwards, but they're coming forwards. And it's really impressive. I mean, like I say, it's all done in one take. And there's a there's loads of takes like this in this movie where, um, you know, in certain films when the camera just keeps rolling and the dialogue keeps happening, you can tell it's all done in one continuous shot. It just grounds it a little bit more rather than cutting like so many people do every five, six seconds, um, sometimes even quicker than that. So that's one thing <coughs> you will notice about this movie. It's the amount of long takes in it, which I think do work. Um, what I love about films like this um, is why people like tend, or why people tend to not like certain films like this. Um, you know, is because it doesn't live up to the norm of what is considered sort of a standard film. Um, you know, just because people, especially people that don't really venture out of just other than what's on at the cinema or what's in the top, you know, 10 at the box office or whatever it may be. And um, I think people sometimes, they just like to stick with what's familiar. I like, and I'm sure many of you do, like to venture out the box a little bit, see what, you know, other directors, other countries, other filmmakers have to offer, you know, and what, you know, they're doing. And, um, you know, it doesn't follow the same traits and the same camera techniques and styles as, say, like a, you know, a typical Hollywood act, like, a grade movie would be this is very much like i say very different and that's what i love about films like this like they really do show you that um like the creative you know being creative and just um telling something original and doing something different sometimes it's so much more appealing you know that's what really does work or definitely what appeals to me um this is a film like i say i can't stress enough i knew nothing about it 
and I absolutely thoroughly enjoyed it. And the fact the film is 42 years old now, um, you know, and I watched it for the first time quite recently, you know, it's absolutely amazing. It's a real testament to the movie itself, and um, it really doesn't seem it. If you watch this movie, you won't be looking at this thinking, oh, yeah, that was definitely made in 1981. You know, you definitely, <laughs> there is no way you'll be looking at this because it's, um, I just, like I said, where I never heard of it, it doesn't seem like it's rooted um, at all in the early 80s at all. It doesn't come across like that. Um, it looks like, in a way, um, you know, without giving it too much praise, but it looks like it could have only been made about five, ten years ago, you know, such is, you know, how good this film is. And it's one of these films that I think a lot of people be divided by. Um, I'm not sure to say if any of you out there have seen this movie. Please let me know, because as I say, it's a, uh, you know, I'd never heard of it. It's a really sort of... Uh, like I say, a mishmash film, you don't know what to, I didn't know what to expect, um, and it's one of them films I think it, a lot of people will be divided on, you'll either like it or not like it, or like don't get it, um, and I think, I can't wait to watch it again, I'm going to watch it again soon. Um, so having read up on the film, <coughs> like I do with some of the reviews, I just do a little bit of research just to get a bit of background, um, sort of, you know, in regards to the movie itself. I didn't realise that throughout the film, um, uh, you know, like, so, I forgot where I read it, but somebody pointed out there's a myriad of complications and possibilities of what Azumi is going through, our main character here. Um, she goes up and down in the film, such as, like, I mean, she's very young, um, such as um, her character is unpredictable. For, like, one minute, you know, she's at the top of the, like, skyscraper, then she's in, like, an underground lair. One minute she's being lifted up and down by a crane. Um, you know, the she goes up and down, you know, one minute she's playful, then she's serious. Um, there's a lot of different scenes here where it sort of depicts her youth and you're sort of getting it's there's a lot of <coughs> symbols like that um, sort of come across where she is sort of that teenager where she's going between um, like there's a scene where she's <coughs> as I say sort of rolling around her sort of apartment it's sort of like a playful teenager then one minute she's going to visit this yakuza boss and she, so she she just keeps changing all the time she's never sort of one character trait throughout the entire movie you never know sort of what she's going to be one minute she's laughing then she's down and then she's you know moody that kind of thing she goes up and down her character um you know is unpredictable um the opening shot of her, like I say, she's upside down in this, when you see the first shot you see of her, she's upside down in this sort of crab, like bridge position, highs and like, it's just one minute, like I say, she's doing that and then she'll just change into like, say, right, okay, I'm going to be your Yakuza boss now. Um, all men she encounters in this movie seem to gravitate towards her. Um, her school friends are all male. Um, the Yakuza gang thinks she's amazing that she ends up becoming the boss of. One even cuddling her at one point saying, you smell like my mum. People seem to be, in this movie, they're drawn to Izumi. She has this aura about her where, um, especially guys, just want to hang around with her. They just, not necessarily in like a sexual way or a predatory way, but they just want to be around her. Um, there's just sort of this aura about her where, um, <coughs> as I say, that people, especially men, are attracted to. Um so the Yakuza boss, who, there's a Yakuza boss who like strips in front of her and threatens to see her, like to sell her into prostitution. She is like, I think she's meant to be like 17, um, and she is sometimes, like I say, sometimes playful, sometimes serious. One minute she is violent. She's very much in a male orientated world here, and she doesn't back down. But at the same time, she has this sense of naivety and wonder about the world and what is going on around her. Like she will go and visit a Yakuza boss, but at the same time, she'll be all like asking like really naive questions and things like that so like I say she fluctuates between one thing then the other and she has this playful nature but at the same time this serious nature about her at the same time um she doesn't fully understand everything that's going on but she will go into it headstrong and confronts things when they need to be sorted out um she is strong and weak at the same time which pretty much makes the character you know the way um it flips between the whole film being absurd to art house flick to realism and then even at the same time adding moments of comedy as well there's you say like you can't really describe this film in one sentence as i'm proving with this review it's um there's a lot going on with this movie and it's one of the movies that i think will benefit from quite a few repeat viewings actually it's one of them movies because i said i had no idea if it was just gonna if it was an action film i just like I say, I just saw Sailor Suit and Machine Gun, and I thought, right, got to give it a go. Um, 
<laughs> so it's, it, there's a real lot of stuff going on here with this movie. Um, you know, so she basically um, just trying to like her her dad. She explains like sort of she was like daughter, wife, and mother to her father who's dead now. Um, getting across her like how mature she was and the, like the responsibilities she may have had. But at the same time, she is like I say playful, using swings, wanted to go on motorbike rides, crawling around the room at one point. The next, you know, very mature. Then not as I said, mentioned earlier, you know, not even scared going to like meet this like scary Yakuza boss. So um, her character is very intriguing. It's very. Um, like I say, why people are attracted to her. And as I say, it's not a case that they just want to get her into bed or anything like that, but it's there's just people like where it's like sort of, she's sort of naive about the outside world, but every problem she encounters, she will deal with one step at a time and she'll do it in her way on her terms. So as I say, she goes from headstrong to being all naive and there's a real interesting dynamic there, especially with the characters that she encounters through the movie. Um, the film opens with two guys going to visit this older man and they there's a funny scene where um, they want him to reduce the pain and he pulls out, the guy pulls out this humongous needle, like this great big needle and it turns out he's um, like a vet. So there's there are little bits of moment. It's not a comedy throughout, not by any means, but it's what I would call sort of sometimes a black comedy. The comedy sometimes is very subtle. Um, you know, we meet Azumi played by Heroku who suddenly random Yakuza just turn up her school one day and they take her away to their sort of headquarters. She explains like she won't be their, their boss. They say, okay, fair enough. That's the way it's going to be. And um, the let's go out in a blaze of glory and take out this rival gang. Even though there's only four of them in the gang that Azumi joins, they're going off to take it. They think, right, well, if that's if you're not going to be the boss, we're finished anyway. Let's go and take on this other clan, and there's about forty of them, and they like they say, well, it's forty versus four. Um, <coughs> so she says, I can't do that. I can't let you do that. So she ends up becoming becoming the boss. Um, she gets hung. They get drunk. She's hung over the next day. Gets called to go and meet this rival clan, and they show her no respect whatsoever. But she's not scared about these guys. You know, she's not. Even though they're older and they these are real dangerous men, she's not scared from them. You know, she is not scared in the slightest. And I think it's she's. There's something very intriguing about this character, you know. Um, so they show no respect whatsoever. They just see this young girl who doesn't know anything. Um, they get <coughs> they get their turf back. The her get like clan get the this turf back as sort of the gift um, to like the new person in charge. And somebody opens fire on their headquarters um, at some point, and then she gets expelled from school. Um, on top of this is like the notion her father may have been murdered so we've got this going on as well at the same time um, it's very hard to sort of talk through the plot because there is quite a lot going on um, one of her gang turns up dead she goes to confront the rival gang about this and they ridicule her by like sort of lowering her up and down into this like cement from this crane as I mentioned earlier um, her, then her gang have kidnapped this guy's son um, so they can release her and you really do get a sense of family with this, like this clan that she becomes a part of. You really do sort of, they really do get a family bond going on the way they, as the film progresses, they all start bonding together and they, like the characters in it become really lovable, you know, even though they're like sort of Yakuza gang, um, they're, they're sort of, <laughs> compared to the other gangs going on, they're sort of the nicer one, uh, if that makes sense. Um her place gets trashed as they're looking for some drugs that have gone missing. It turns out the criminal boss who's naming this is Fatso is at the bottom of it all. Um, he says a really good line that I like um, <coughs> in this movie. He says, only God has the right to choose who lives and dies. Um, but he is busy at the moment, so we're taking his place. I just love that line. I just, when they said that, you know, the subtitles kind of thought, that is such a cool line. You know, I, I really did like that. You know, only God, you know, has the right to choose, but he's busy at the moment, so we're taking his place. Um, love that. So his daughter, Mayumi, like, dated her father. There's a, as I say, if this is making no sense, don't worry. I'm just trying to remember the plot off the top of my head. <laughs> you know, what, what actually happened in the movie. Um, yeah, so his daughter, Mayumi, dated Azumi's, like, sort of, father um even at one point making a stand on top of like a the makes her azumi stand on top of a landmine at the end of the film ends with her killing the rival gang with a machine gun hence the title this is right at the end i'll so say that's sort of <coughs> the 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 like 
machine gun part of the movie don't expect like sort of john woo action scenes in this film because it really isn't that kind of movie as i say it's sort of um coming of age as i say drama gangster film but like few bits of comedy here and there you can't as i say just summarize this film in uh, a simple review because there's it's not like as i mentioned earlier like a standard movie making it's very different it's very fun it's a good watch it's a really enjoyable film um it's worth checking out just like i say if you want something different um you know that tries to be many things at once but it's none of them things if that makes sense it's not like it you know it's trying to be all these different things but it's none of them things at the same time it is very much sort of its own entity here um and it's just a great piece of cinema um please do check it out if you ever get the chance as i don't know as i said i didn't know what to expect with this film i had no idea what to expect so if you've never heard of this film and you want something different you want sort of um you know like i say japanese coming of age art house comedy gangster film then check out Sailor Suit and Machine Gun.